Good afternoon, everybody. So today we will start a new topic, and that is change management. In lecture number three of this class, we talked about uh, digital business transformation, whereby we saw that many traditional organizations today are trying to adapt digital technologies as a way of improving their uh, performance. And as we hinted uh, then, that usually when a company adapts digital technologies, this represents a major change to an organization, which means there will be a number of uh, things uh, that the business will have to undergo in order to embrace this change, in order to, to accommodate uh, the changes that are brought about by digital technologies. But the most significant uh, challenge that most uh, businesses are, are facing is the digital uh, change that is brought by these technologies. Uh, so the change that happened within an organization as a result of embracing the, the digital technologies is the biggest challenge uh, that most uh, companies are facing. And that is for an obvious uh, reason, that whenever a company adopts uh, new technology, a number of changes will happen. For instance, uh, the way customers are, are, are saved might be uh, affected or might, might change. The way we process, uh, say, orders will change. The way we carry out uh, processes such as procurement, manufacturing, will change. So managing uh, change becomes uh, one of the uh, paramount activities that most digital uh, businesses are, are co concerned uh, with. And whenever a, a digital uh, tra transformation project uh, becomes larger, the change will also be uh, larger and this uh, will will represent a big challenge to, to, to staff because this is something that they are not used to and you need to and take a number of uh, steps uh, to make sure that the changes that are brought about by embracing digital technologies are well received and accommodated within an organization because usually when we adapt uh, new technologies, we have goals. We, we expect that these technologies will contribute to improvement in business performance. But unless uh, the organization is ready to accept these uh, changes, we may not be able to achieve uh, those objectives. So it's very important that uh, we, we manage uh, uh, the changes that are brought about by digital transformation in order to achieve the goals that we, we intend to achieve. And when it comes to changes, it's not just about uh, a traditional business that wants to transform into digital business. This is applicable to pretty much uh, even established uh, companies because we know that uh, digital businesses are operating in, in an environment that is constantly changing, which means if you want to stay competitive in the market, you have to adapt new solutions, new technologies, new ways of doing business from time to time. To time. And whenever that happens, it will bring about uh, changes. And that's why you see even large companies uh, such as uh, Microsoft, uh, Apple, from time to time, they undergo changes. So the question of change is not just about uh, uh, a traditional business, but whenever uh, you have chosen to be uh, to use digital technologies uh, as a way of uh, creating uh, value, which today is mandatory uh, for most businesses. If they want to stay competitive, you have to uh, uh, embrace the new technologies. Change is inevitable. So you have to be prepared for changes because that's the only way you can stay competitive in the business environment. And these uh, changes and the challenges that are come uh, along with the changes come for a number of reasons and mostly are related to the challenges of managing e-commerce within a, an organization. That we are, there are a number of challenges that any organization that adopts digital technologies 
will encounter when it comes to business uh, transformation. The challenge number one is uh, strategy. Usually, an established uh, traditional business will have its own strategy, and whenever you adapt new technologies, whenever you adapt uh, digital technologies, there will be a challenge of uh, integrating the traditional uh, uh, business strategy with the digital business uh, strategy. We, we saw it when we discussed about uh, uh, strategy in Chapter 5, that most organizations face the challenge of uh, defining where the digital strategy should be placed, whether it should be part of functional uh, areas or it should be part of the corporate strategy, which means with an impact across the entire organization. So this is one of the uh, challenges. It's uh, number one challenge that most uh, traditional uh, companies are facing, how to integrate digital business strategy into the existing strategy. Another ch challenge that uh, these companies are facing is the structure of an organization. Whenever you adapt digital, digital technologies, it is inevitable that the structure of your organization uh, in terms of how uh, activities are organized across uh, uh, functional areas and vertically within an organization, there will be a need for reconfiguration of the organization. And this is a big challenge because whenever these such changes are introduced, it is likely that employees may not be uh, very uh, uh, friendly or very receptive to these uh, changes because as we saw when we discussed uh, e-procurement, whenever you adapt uh, new uh, digital uh, solutions, some of the processes within an organization may be eliminated, which means there are in individuals within an organization that may fear their jobs might be taken away as a result of adapting uh, digital technologies. So resistance is one of the challenges that uh, usually uh, organizations face when they introduce new systems within uh, an organization. But another challenge is uh, skills and staff because this is uh, uh, new technology. Digital technologies are uh, quite new and they are still evolving, which means most organizations are still struggling to find people with the right skills and the right uh, capabilities for implementing these uh, changes. So finding uh, competent staff, as we will discuss more in, in detail uh, later, is a, a big challenge that most companies that want to uh, embrace digital technologies uh, are facing, which means uh, an organization that wants to undertake digital transformation, among other things, has to prepare itself for in term, through finding people with the right skills and competence for carrying out uh, this process. And that's why we have this, uh, we, are, we are interested in discussing uh, change management. That is management of processes, structural, technical stuff, and cultural changes that are happen within an organization as a result of introducing digital uh, technologies. Now, there are numerous uh, aspects that we will talk about when it comes to implementation of uh, digital uh, technologies and how uh, organizations can, can, can carry out this transformation. The, the aspect number one is scheduling, and that is uh, deciding uh, suitable stages for introducing uh, the change. That, uh, so we know that change, uh, introducing uh, digital technologies within an organization is a transition, uh, a transitional process. You, you are bringing about uh, a transformation within an organization, which means you need to decide how these changes will be introduced. And this is what we call uh, scheduling, that deciding uh, the type of activities and the timing for introducing uh, those uh, changes. And then you need to decide about resources. So in order uh, to have a successful uh, tra digital transformation, you need to have uh, resources. And this could be uh, financial resources, human resources that are necessary in order to achieve the transformation that we desire. But also you need to think about uh, budgeting. And so we, we know that 
the aim of this transformation is to improve uh, performance and we want to uh, 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 aim uh, like on the investments we are, we are making, we want to, to, to achieve a return. But that is possible by determining uh, the, the budget. Uh, and that is uh, what uh, financial resources do you have, do you have uh, how much it costs to, to implement this system, and how you should uh, manage your, your, your budgets, how you should al allocate the funds for different activities that will be implemented in the, uh, in the course of digital business transformation. But also we need to think about uh, organizational uh, structures, that how will the organization be like after introducing these uh, changes, and how people will receive uh, these changes. We also need to think about uh, the human impact of change, uh, that is uh, the implication of uh, digital technologies to the people that are working within your, your organization. And this is, is a very sensitive aspect because, as I say, if uh, uh, the employees uh, of your organization will be resistant to changes, then it is likely that your digital transformation uh, project will not be uh, successful. And then you need to think about the technologies that are necessary to support uh, the, the change. And here we will discuss about uh, knowledge uh, management uh, later in, uh, in this class. And finally, we will talk about risk uh, management. That is, whenever we, you adopt uh, new uh, technologies or new solutions, new systems in your organization, there are some risks that you should be prepared for. And how to manage uh, those risks is part of this uh, topic that we are discussing today. Now, before you think about digital uh, business uh, transformation or introducing change within an organization, there are key factors that you need to consider in order to achieve uh, successful uh, changes. First, you need to consider change levels, oh. and these are the main aspects that are likely to be implicated as a result of introducing digital uh, technologies. The first one is the, the market and the business model, that is the way you create, uh, disseminate, and capture value in your organization. How do you uh, create value, how do you disseminate it to uh, customers, and how do you capture it? We discussed about uh, business uh, models uh, earlier before, and business models is, is one of the uh, aspects that will be implicated as a result of introducing uh, digital technologies. That whenever you, you, you introduce these technologies, most likely you will also have to change your business model, the way you, you, you do business, the way you create uh, value. Another aspect that will be affected is uh, business processes. Uh, these are a series of activities uh, within organization that are responsible for value creation. So when we adapt to digital technologies, business processes are, are likely to be uh, affected. And also you need to consider organizational structure and culture. So this is another uh, aspect, uh, the configuration of your organization, uh, the norms, ways of doing things within uh, your organization will also be affected. And finally, technology and infrastructure. So the, 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 the methods, the, the technology that we are using today to create value will be completely altered, will be transformed as a result of adopting new uh, digital technologies. Now, there are key success factors that you need to take into account. Right? In order to be successful, uh, in introducing change. You have to consider the aspects that are likely to be changed, but also you need to take into account key success factors, that the factors that will make it possible for you to successfully transform your organization. The first one is leadership commitment. So these are uh, senior managers within uh, your organization or board of directors, people that are at the top who are making decisions for an organization. If they are not in support uh, of the new changes, then most likely uh, these changes will not be possible. So you need to win uh, uh, confidence of these uh, people, uh, the people that are responsible for making decisions within an organization. But 
Also, you need to consider digital uh, business transformation as a project, which means this is, uh, uh, it, it has to follow systematic uh, approaches to managing this uh, project, and we will discuss uh, how to, uh, to, to manage uh, business, uh, digital business uh, transformation project. But it's a, a very critical uh, aspect that you need to, to consider. And another factor is uh, employee, that is, as I said earlier. In order to have a successful digital business, you need to have uh, talented employees, people with the right skills and competence. And as such, it's important that whenever you introduce digital business uh, transformation in an organization, you have to think about employees that will be part of this uh, transformation. And then finally, you need to win employee ownership. Ownership in the sense that the employees that are working within an, an organization have to be receptive and have to embrace this uh, the new system. So if you cannot receive uh, support of the existing employees, as I said earlier, then it, uh, your digital transformation project will not be a success. We will discuss the, these factors uh, as we go along. Now, we are talking about transforming, uh, transforming organizations, that is introducing changes within an organization, but these changes can be classified in different uh, ways by looking the large scale, across, uh, large scale changes across an, an industry, we can categorize changes introduced within an organization as uh, incremental changes or discontinuous changes. By incremental changes, it means that we, you, are, you, you introduce changes bit by, by bit. That is, you introduce small adjustments to the, the organization that you have today to getting better organization. But in, instead of introducing large changes at a time, incremental change uh, refers to in, in, in introducing small adjustments within an organization. So you, you can best be illustrated by this diagram where we see an organization takes uh, small steps in introducing uh, uh, changes within a, a, an organization. But another type of uh, uh, change is discontinuous uh, change, and this is a radical uh, change that an organization can introduce. So, for instance, when the internet and uh, the web technology came in, most of organizations that embraced these technologies uh, in early, early years underwent what, what, we, uh, what could be regarded as discontinuous change. That is a radical change to the way uh, they were doing business. So usually uh, incremental change would be, for instance, if your competitors have introduced, uh, say, new products, then responding to these uh, uh, competitors by, say, also in introducing similar uh, products or restructuring of your business process would be a sort of incremental change. It's a change, but it's not significant change. But this continuous change represents radical change within your organization in the way you are doing business. Another uh, way of uh, looking at changes is whether the change is anticipatory or reactive. Anticipatory change is what could be regarded as proactive change, whereby there is no any force from outside an organization, but rather you are taking a proactive initiative to change your organization. So in this case, an organization prepares for changes in the environment. So instead of waiting for the change to happen so that you can change your organization, you are taking measures in advance. And that's why we call anticipatory, which comes from to anticipate changes. So instead of waiting until changes happen in the environment, you take uh, measures in, in advance. But the opposite of that is reactive change, where an organization uh, undergoes changes as a result of uh, changes within the, the, the environment. So something happens in the environment, then you are forced uh, to undergo changes. Now, as you are operating a, a, in a digital business, it is recommended that you have to be proactive. That is, you need to always engage in anticipatory changes. That is, 
instead of waiting for external forces uh, to force you uh, into undertaking changes, you have to always uh, anticipate uh, changes. You have to foresee what is likely to come and take appropriate measures uh, to, uh, to respond to those changes whenever uh, they, they, they happen. So business, digital businesses are always encouraged to be proactive, proactive in the sense that foresee what is likely to happen in your environment and take necessary changes uh, to, to respond to, to those possible uh, forces that may happen in your uh, environment. Now, if we combine uh, those four types of uh, changes that we, we, we have just uh, seen, incremental versus discontinuous, uh, reactive versus anticipatory, we obtain different forms uh, of change. And that is, you are, a change can be incremental and anticipatory, and that's what we have uh, tuning. In this case, the change uh, happens uh, bit by bit, but it's, it doesn't happen as a result of external force. So an organization prepares for changes that are likely to happen in the environment, and as a result of that, they are taking small steps uh, time, at, uh, time from time to time to prepare themselves for these changes that are likely uh, to happen. And this is what we call uh, tuning. So you are adjusting your organization as a preparation to the changes that are likely to happen in your environment. But the opposite of that is uh, adaptation, where small changes are, are taken within an organization, but as a result of some uh, incident with, uh, from outside. So for instance, uh, you are, say your competitors may uh, adapt new technologies and this uh, poses a threat to, to your, uh, to your uh, like business. So you decide to, to react, but the, the reaction happens in form of uh, small steps taken uh, to adapt to the new technology. Now, an opposite of uh, incremental uh, changes is discontinuous changes, which can also happen as uh, anticipatory. And in this case, we have what we call reorientation. So you have a radical change that is discontinuous change, but it happens without uh, being influenced by external forces. So nothing happens in the environment, but you undertake radical changes as a preparation for uh, the changes that are likely to happen in the environment. And the last uh, uh, form of uh, change is uh, recreation, where a radical change happens within an organization. You, you undertake a major change, but as a result of some force uh, that has happened in the uh, external environment. Now, before we proceed, uh, I would like to take you through uh, business process management. And that comes from our discussion earlier when we talked about uh, value creation and, uh, and the value chain, that usually uh, within organizations, there are numerous processes that take place in order to create uh, value to our customers that will also allow your business to capture value, that is, make profit. Now, it is very common for most uh, businesses to, to, to review the, the, their processes, uh, that these processes uh, that are involved in value creation uh, from time to time. And when we undertake uh, steps to improve uh, these uh, uh, processes, is what we call business process imp improvement. Now we will discuss it a bit later. But the approach that is used when it, in undertaking this uh, improvement by using uh, software tools in order to, in to increase the, the performance and efficiency of your business is what we call uh, business process uh, management. And this is slightly different from what we call uh, business process reengineering. In this case, our concern is to undertake incremental impro improvements on your business processes. But opposite of that is business process uh, reengineering, whereby an organization adapts significant changes to the processes that are involved in value creation in order to improve the performance of your uh, organization. 
and you can mark uh, the, the kind of words that are used in, in this uh, definition, that the fundamental re rethinking. That is, there is a, a complete change of the, of the thinking of uh, 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 how the business processes operate and how we can transform these businesses' processes in order to uh, improve performance of our business. And this involves radical redesign, radical re redesign in the sense that there is a significant change in the way these processes are undertaken. So whether it's a, a customer service uh, process, whether it's uh, order processing process, whether it's a manufacturing uh, process, whenever we undertake a business process re-engineering, re there is a significant change to this uh, uh, process. And the aim is to improve uh, performance, and this can be measured in terms of the, the cost, that, uh, uh, how much we have been able to reduce cost of undertaking that process, how much we have been able to improve uh, the quality uh, of the products that uh, result from that process, how much we have been able to improve service or speed of the process. So whenever you, uh, you undertake such a significant uh, change on the uh, process that is responsible for creating value, is what we have, uh, we call uh, business process reengineering. Now, there are a number of stages that we can follow if you want to undertake business process uh, reengineering. First, in order to undertake significant changes to the process of your organization, you need to identify the process that is uh, needed for innovation or for changes. And, that is, this, and this can, can be done by reviewing the, uh, the, the value chain of, of your organization. We, we discussed uh, uh, earlier in this class about value chain. So you, you have first to identify the different uh, processes within an organization that are creating uh, value. So this could be uh, procurement uh, processes, customer relationship management uh, processes, logistics, uh, production and so on. So first you have to identify those uh, values, uh, uh, those processes. And among those processes you need to categorize which one contribute the most to the value created to the customer and which one contribute uh, the least. Because the, the goal is to improve those processes that create uh, more value within an organization. And then second, you need to identify the key aspects that are, will be changed within our organization as a result of re-engineering of these uh, processes. So we, we, we saw earlier that you have those four uh, key change levers, that key aspects that are likely to be implement, uh, implicated. And that is uh, organization structure, uh, the technology. We also saw the business model could be changed. So after identifying uh, those change uh, levers, you need to develop a process vision. Because if, for instance, you are the project manager responsible for transforming your organization into uh, digital uh, 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 starters, then you need to convince uh, the management of why the changes you are pro uh, pro uh, proposing are necessary or are important. So, and this requires you, among other things, to develop the process uh, vision. That is, how will the process look like after this re-engineering, after the changes? How will it look like? And what kind of benefits will be ob obtained as a result of re-engineering this process? And finally, you need to understand the existing uh, processes. That is, before you can re-engineer, before you can change uh, uh, a process into a new process, you have to have a good, good understanding of the current process so that you know what, are you, what you want exactly to, to improve and what will be the difference between the current uh, process and the proposed new uh, process. And by understanding the current uh, uh, process, it will help you as a benchmark when the new process is implemented, you can compare the performance of the new process and the old process to see whether there have been uh, any gains as a result of uh, re-engineering of the process. And of course, after these uh, four steps have been uh, performed, 
then you want to design uh, and prototype the new process. That is, uh, you, are, you, you want to translate the, the, the ideas, the vision you have into tangible uh, uh, aspects, something that people uh, can, can see. So you have to design and prototype. We will discuss about prototyping uh, a bit later, but simply it means creation of a, a model or a sample uh, system to show people how the proposed system will, will uh, look like, how it will work. Uh, as I hinted earlier, another aspect that can be uh, c considered different from business process reengineering is business process improvement. So as we saw, when you are reengineering processes, then it's uh, a complete change uh, of the processes. It's a significant, it's a radical change to the process. But sometimes we just want to improve the performance of the existing uh, processes. So in this case, we are not eliminating the existing process, but we want to, to, to use uh, technology to improve the performance of the, uh, of the process that we have. And this is what we call business uh, process improvement. Or in other words, it involves automation of the, uh, the processes that we, we already have. But it's very important to, to, to consider that we are not intended, uh, our goal is not just to automate uh, the process we have. We want to achieve gains by improving these uh, uh, processes, which means even in case of business process improvement, we have to consider identifying uh, processes that add the most value to the organization. So just as in business uh, process reengineering, you have to identify which processes are important for creation of uh, customer uh, value, and those are the ones that should be uh, the primary target for improvement. Because we don't, we don't, we don't just want to uh, automate uh, business uh, processes that are not important to your organization. Those that create the most value are likely to be, uh, are in fact, the, the most important processes that you need to think about. Now, as we plan, uh, as we, uh, we are about to introduce change within an organization, it is very important to, to plan for the, for the change. And that is to have a mental image of uh, how the change uh, will be like and how it should be undertaken. And this is the subject of uh, planning change, which we are going to discuss now. So you, are, you have an organization that uses, say, a particular technology or uses a particular approach and let's, let's say this is a traditional uh, uh, business which you want to transform into a digital uh, business. So we need, to, we need to plan for this uh, transformation process. And as I say, when it comes to transformation uh, uh, of a business, usually we have goals. We want to improve uh, performance. So before introducing uh, uh, digital technologies to your organization, it is very common to start with objectives that why do you want to in introduce uh, these changes and how are you planning to introduce uh, the, the changes. And uh, these are some of the things that we discussed when uh, we, we, we talked about uh, a digital business uh, strategy. But in this case, in this topic today, our concern is from the stage of uh, creating objectives, deciding the strategy and tactics, how do we implement all these decisions that we, we, we have made? So, so far we, are, we have seen a couple of strategic decisions that an organization uh, can, can make in order to realize digital uh, business uh, strategy. But uh, we need now to implement these uh, decisions that have been made. And this is the, what we are uh, concerned about now. Now, as a I pointed out earlier that this is a complex project. It's not easy. It's easy to talk about it, but when it comes to implementation, it may not be that easy. That's why even today we still have many businesses that are doing uh, business in a very traditional way. 
not that they don't know about the benefits of adapting digital technologies, but implementation of such changes are really difficult. And that's why we are trying to, to learn a systematic approach on how you can carry out this transformation because it's not easy. And here we have uh, some of the uh, 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 hints on how, uh, how difficult it is uh, to, to transform a traditional business into a digital uh, business. This was a survey of companies in, in Europe and in the United States that were asked about the challenges that are facing when it comes to implementing uh, digital uh, business projects. 58% uh, of them say that uh, their projects always achieve their goals, which means you have about 42% that don't end up achieving their goals. And that's a quite uh, sub uh, substantial proportion. But uh, among these, only 21% say that they, uh, they do that within the deadlines. So this is just uh, 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 an, uh, a kind of, uh, it gives you a picture of how difficult it is to, to, to implement these uh, transformations. And then you have only 39% that uh, achieve budget and positive return on investment. As I said earlier, when we introduce these changes, we want to improve performance and we want to gain out of these technologies. But unfortunately, as this, as this study suggests, only 39% achieve their budget that the plan, uh, that the project is accomplished within the planned budgets. And only this 39% achieve a positive return on investment. That, that is the, uh, the gains they obtain uh, from the investments they are making into this uh, transformation. And then you have uh, over 80% of respondents never meet their project deadlines, and 6% never deliver their projects within budgets. And nearly half of all respondents do not have a structured approach to managing their web projects. So these statistics just show you how difficult it is to implement these transformations. And this explains why we still have so many uh, companies that are lagging behind with traditional business models. They know that these are important, but it's difficult to, to implement. Now here we have some of the challenges that companies that uh, try to adopt uh, digital technologies face in the cause of digital uh, technology transformation. The first uh, challenge uh, when it comes to digital transformation uh, 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 projects is changing scope and requirements. That is, whenever you are implementing a digital uh, uh, business uh, uh, strategy project, Usually, the requirements of the users within an organization tend to change from time to time. And this, of course, is uh, obvious. We are operating in a business environment that is very dynamic. So perhaps before the project is accomplished, new requirements will emerge. And this poses a challenge to implementation of uh, such projects. And then you have unrealistic expectations that usually stakeholders especially owners and senior managers, set very high expectations when digital uh, uh, technologies are adapted within an organization. There are people that believe that digital technologies can do uh, every kind of magic that an organization need in order to uh, stay competitive within an organization. So they set too high expectations that may not be uh, realized. And then you have a uh, business fails to input on time that usually a, such a, uh, a project requires inputs from other, uh, from other functions within an organization. It's not just the task of uh, IT uh, department or a designated uh, team for managing such a project, but you need to have input from different uh, functional areas within an organization. And sometimes such input may not come in time. And then you have an uh, underestimation of the, the, the task. And sometimes users fail to uh, articulate or to uh, provide and explain exactly w which requirements uh, they, they need for, for the new solutions. And also it's difficult to 
get re, uh, really necessary resources for implementing uh, such uh, projects. You have poor collaboration and then poor user input. And then you have a lack of clear project management process. And lastly, lack of skills. And these are some of the things that uh, I have hinted uh, earlier. So here we have uh, some of the uh, measures that you can implement to overcome these uh, challenges. And the first one is a focus on user requirements. You have to, to know that in the end, after implementing these uh, uh, changes within an organization, it's, it's the users that within an organization that will be responsible for creating value with these uh, new solutions that have been adapted. So it's very important that whenever you introduce changes within an organization, focus on the requirements of those that eventually will use the new digital solutions. And then you need to have senior uh, management support. That these are uh, people that will make uh, final decisions when it comes to uh, introduction of uh, new digital technologies within an organization. And it's important to win their support. And then you, you need to have collaboration between different skill sets. Usually, uh, digital uh, technologies will have a, an effect that cuts across the entire organization, which means you need to have different uh, skill sets from different uh, functional areas to make sure that the new proposed solutions will have uh, uh, effective uh, impact or desired uh, results. And then you have to manage stakeholder expectations, that stakeholders have to be informed uh, precisely on what is, uh, is to be achieved from the proposed new solutions in order, in a way that when, uh, when the results uh, come out, they should not be surprised or they should not be disappointed by having too high expectations uh, from what uh, the new solutions can actually uh, provide. So the stakeholders have to be prepared in terms of being informed exactly what are the intended results and what can be achieved as a result of adopting uh, the new technologies. Now, there are a number of uh, elements that you need to incorporate or to include when undertaking uh, a digital transformation uh, project. And these are the key elements that you have to, uh, to consider. First is uh, estimation, and that involves uh, identification of activities that will have to be conducted in order to undertake this uh, transformation. And this is what we call work breakdown structure. That is, we have a digital business transformation project. This project has to be divided into different activities. So you have to identify all the necessary activities that you will have to undertake in order to accomplish uh, your project. So this could be uh, activities such as pre-development of task, uh, content planning, how the content w w will be like, developing the content, publishing the site, pre-launch uh, promotion, ongoing promotion. So this is an example uh, of the activities that may be uh, uh, planned, say, for introduction of a website. So you, you, you need to uh, define all the activities, depending on what kind of uh, uh, technologies uh, are you trying to adopt or what platforms are you trying to introduce in your organization. The most important uh, uh, point that you need to take from that uh, aspect is you have to identify all the activities that will be conducted in order to implement uh, that new solution or that new uh, platform. And then you need to allocate uh, resources. So you have to identify all the resources that are relevant uh, for accomplishing these ac activities and allocate uh, these resources to each of these uh, uh, activities. And then you need to define uh, a schedule, and that is uh, after identifying the, the activities and the resources that you, you need uh, uh, to accomplish, you need to decide timing for each of these activities that have to be accomplished. So this is an example for a website development uh, schedule. So uh, in this case, 
the all activities have been identified on the left hand side and that is pre-development activities, content planning, content development, publishing the site, pre-launch promotion and continuous uh, ongoing promotion. And each of these activities have to be decided uh, when it will be uh, carried out or undertaken. So you have to uh, prepare uh, a schedule that shows exactly when are you planning to uh, perform each of the activities that have been uh, indicated as necessary for implementing your, your, your project. And finally, you have to monitor uh, and control. Monitor is uh, continuous uh, assessment of the new uh, uh, system to make sure that it performs according to the, to the plan. So usually uh, you have expectations, you, you have the goals for the uh, newly introduced system. After implementation of the system, you, you have to, to monitor to see whether it performs as you expected or not. And control is when you are taking measures to, to, to correct uh, any uh, malfunction or any deviation from the uh, expected performance. So you have uh, goals and, and targets that you have set, and whenever the new system does not perform according to the plan or according to your expectations, then you have to take uh, control measures. That is, you have to correct uh, any deviations. It's three o'clock. I think we can take a break and proceed after. <laughs>